Hello everybody, my name is Arlene and today Catherine, Daniel, Hossein, Rosemary and I will be presenting a paper based on the Malin and colleague research of 2017 titled Trichromacy Increases Fruit Intake Rates of Wild Capuchins, Cebus Capucinus Imitator. The presentation includes an introduction to the topic, materials and methods of data collection, results and novels findings, discussions of the results and interpretation, and conclusion remarks related to the feeding grades and the color vision of the monkeys under consideration. As you can see in the, as you can see in the slides, color vision and monkey forage Color vision seems one of the vital tools to finding food, especially fruits such as figs, in the forest for monkeys. The use of fruit used to find ripe fruit differs between trichromatic and dichromatic white-faced capuchins monkeys. Plant level variables used were fruit colors, conspicuous and cryptic fruits, especially figs. Monkey level variables are trichromatic and dichromatic capuchin species. Next slide, please. Fruit ripening colors for most forest trees that monkeys consume range from green to reddish colors such as red, orange, and yellow. These color changes are positively linked to fleshiness and desirable nutrients, hence sought by the monkeys. However, Intraspecific color vision is prevalent among nearly all diurnal monkeys within the neotropics and is used in balancing selection that maintains genetic polymorphism. Next slide. Many species of neotropical monkeys and other species of strepsirenes have multiple alleles of long to mid wavelength sensitive from red to green absent gene on their X chromosomes. They also have a single allelic short wavelength sensitive blue absent gene on the autosomes that promotes polymorphic color vision. Consequently, balancing selection maintains allelic variations. The studies on captive monkeys have observed that monkeys with trichromatic vision have foraging advantage over dichromatic vision who are red-green colorblind. Next slide, please. It is assumed that trichromatic assist in the search for ripe fruit amid green leaves due to the stability of the color signal even in dappled lighting of the forest. If fruit detection and selection could improve for aging efficiency, natural selection should favor the ability to detect different fruit colors leading to an evolutionary strong force that shape primate sensory adaptation. Since dichromats have vision deficiency, they rely on the sense of smell. That is why they are observed to sniff cryptic fruit to determine whether they are ripe. Conspicuous fruits are consumed more by trichromats because they are easily detected compared to cryptic and dark ones. However, existing studies, example of melin and colleagues in 2009 shows no significant difference in the foraging rates for both dichromats and trichromats in the wild as the dichromats sniff fruit to detect and select them which covers their vision deficiency. In the next slide we're going to play a cute short video of these monkeys for you guys up until Catherine is gonna take over after me. Thank you.
I will now be going over the results section of the study. The bigger picture to consider is that there are difficulties in these type of studies where there are so many aspects to consider, like the diversity in age, class, dominant status, and sex differences. In this case, the sample size decreases as we have to take into consideration of all these different factors. Therefore, there is much difficulty in conducting this study. Previous studies done before have suffered from small sample size, and there was not enough power to be able to confirm positive results in the differences in their samples. Therefore, the study had to control for a different aspects in their data collection to attain significant differences and positive results. Before I go into the actual results of the study, I wanted to talk briefly about the background and how the study was conducted. The study was based on the behavioral data of 72 monkeys in Sector Santa Rosa, Costa Rica over the span of 14 months. They analyzed 19,043 fruit intake events from 1,602 foraging encounters of the capuchin monkeys. Another important thing to consider is that this was based on 27 plant species, where 21 of them produced ripe fruit that was more visible to monkeys with trichromatic vision than monkeys with dichromatic vision. Three plant species of the 27 produced cryptically colored fruits that were similar to the background of the leaves. The last three species of the 27 plant species produced dark fruits that were highly visible to all vision phenotypes. Each fruit category has significant variation in their nutrition, but they did not differ significantly in their size, energy intake rates, or energy content. Next, linear mixed models were employed using dichromates. They were used to give results of the study. They were meant to predict fruit intake rates of the capuchin monkeys in the setting of the tropical dry forests. I'll be going over the different aspects of the study, like the sex, age, color vision type, and dominant status. They are all important to consider when going over the results section. Fruit intake rates were not significantly affected by sex. This allowed the study to actually exclude the factor of sex when conducting its analysis. In terms of age, mature monkeys and large immatures had faster feeding rates than small immatures. Regarding color vision type, trichromatics ate conspicuous fruits at a faster rate than dichromatics. There was no difference when cryptic or dark fruits were used. Lastly, dominance rate class actually did not have a significant effect on feeding intake rates of the capuchin monkeys. In conclusion, these were the main results of the study. And now we'll be going into the further discussion of the analysis behind these results. For the discussion, um, the researchers concluded that trichromats ate fruits at a faster rate than dichromats. Uh, the difference between the uh, dichromats and trichromats were not present for all fruit color categories, likely because chromatically cryptic foods were relatively inconspicuous to both and dark fruits were similarly visible to all visual systems. Um, for yellowish to reddish fruits, trichromats had a higher intake rate. Um, as you can see in the figures for dichromats and trichromats, there is a difference between conspicuous, cryptic, and dark fruits, with trichromats having a higher intake rate uh, for the amount of fruits consumed per minute. Um, in the lower image, you can see how there are different types of plant species that both dichromats and trichromats uh, feed on, um, and they are described by their conspicuous, cryptic, and dark colors. Um, and from the majority of these, you can see how trichromats do have a higher intake rate of fruits per minute as well. Um, one of the key points addressed in the paper is the effect of juvenescence on trichromacy and dichromacy. Um, 
but the researchers concluded that color vision did not have a significant effect in the analysis that only included females of all ages. Uh, juvenile results suggest that the effects of color vision type may be particularly strong during juvenescence because of increased demands for recourse, resource acquisition during a crucial window in their development. Um, they also concluded that as they age, capuchins may learn to effectively use non-visual sensors during foraging, which makes the need for trichromacy less important. Um, by controlling for phenological variation, tree species, and monkey age, the effect of color vision type on fruit intake is evident. Another key point made by the researchers in the discussion was the social dominance and the effect that it played on um, the intake of fruit. However, the researchers found that there was no significant effect of social dominance rank on the intake rate. Um, although when they did include dominance rank in the model, it improved their ability to detect an effect of color vision for mature monkeys. Um, by removing time spent in non-foraging behaviors such as fleeing, wailing, or other submissive behaviors, um, and controlling for plant level variables, the researchers were able to remove many of the contexts in which dominant monkeys have an advantage. Um, however, trichromatic and dichromatic monkeys in the study were relatively evenly distributed across each dominant class therefore not confounding any of the conclusions that were based upon color vision phenotype. Um, the researchers also focused on the nutritional value of food, uh, where they concluded that the mean energy content per gram dry weight and net energy gain per minute feeding for conspicuously colored fruits was similar to the energy content of cryptic and dark fruits. Because of the high representation of conspicuous fruits in, con in capuchin diets and the higher intake rates by trichromatic monkeys, trichromacy likely confers an overall nutritional benefit in the context of foraging foods. Um, the researchers suggested that the relative contributions of invertebrates and other dietary components, um, such as macro and micronutrients, um, should be considered in future studies. The last point made by the researchers dealt with balancing selection and polymorphism. As we remember, balancing selection is the maintenance of multiple alleles of a gene within a population in order to enhance genetic diversity. And polymorphism is the discontinuous genetic variation resulting in the occurrence of several different forms or types of individuals among the members of a single species. Um, this study added insight to the mechanisms of balancing selection that has preserved polymorphic color vision in New World monkeys for over 20 million years. Polymorphism is often described as an early or intermediate stage during the evolution of trichromatic vision. Prior research found that dichromats have a different foraging advantage. Efficient gleaning of invertebrate prey attributed to an improved ability to break camouflage. Dichromatic and trichromatic females have similar levels of reproductive success. So therefore, we can see why there's still um, a sense of polymorphism in the population. Um, ultimately, polymorphic color vision of primates is perhaps best viewed as an alternative stable state that evolved under different ecological pressures than those favoring the evolution of a uniform trichromatic vision in howling monkeys, old world monkeys, and apes. Here is the materials and methods section and data for this study was collected from the Santa Rosa sector in Área de Conservación, Guanacaste, Costa Rica. This park is a seasonal tropical dry forest and habitat to the capuchins. There have been many more long-term studies conducted here since 1983, so it is a well-established research site. The subjects for this study are white-faced, medium-sized capuchins. They are omnivorous and forage on invertebrates, but prefer to eat a wide variety of ripe fruits. Their diet changes seasonally with what's available, and um, for this study, 72 of these capuchins were observed across four social groups. Um, our subjects were classified into three age groups, mature, large juvenile, and small juvenile, as well as by dominant status from high-ranking mid-ranking and low-ranking, and vision genotypes of all subjects had been previously reported. Moving on to data collection, research was conducted in three five-month periods from January 2007 to September 2008. 
When monkeys fed on fruit, a fruit patch visit would be recorded. Important details recorded were plant species, diameter, breast height, and phenology, specifically looking at the percentage of canopy coverage and maturity of fruits, leaves, and flowers using a five-point scale. Um, and as you can see here, it ranges from 0% all the way to 100%. Ripe fruit index was calculated by multiplying the ca fruit canopy coverage times the proportion of ripe fruit. Patches with no ripe fruit received a score of zero. Patches with under a 25% score scored one and so on as you can see by this table on the left hand side. The researchers of this study were also able to evaluate ripe fruit collected for nutritional analysis to be able to calculate mean energy intake per minute as a measure of nutritive value for each fruit species. Through the use of spectral reflectance data and color models, fruits were further classified into one of three color categories, conspicuous, cryptic, and dark, as depicted by the picture to the right. Lastly, behavioral data was recorded by conducting modified focal animal samples, which in simple words means that they watched and recorded what the monkeys did for a period of time, such as foraging. Uh, for statistical analysis, a linear mixed model was used to analyze the effect of plant level and primate level variables on intake rate, uh, which means fruits consume per minute of foraging behavior. Models were fit in R, significance was determined using ANOVA, and all reported p-values were based on two-tailed tests. So, that brings us to the concluding remarks. After that, all those couple slides, I know everyone's probably thinking, okay, so now what? What are we walking away with? So we know that color vision variation is common in neotropical monkeys, and it is attributed to certain advantages and disadvantages, the type, depending on the type. So what this means is that we've seen the trichromatic white-faced capuchins consume red fruit faster than the dichromatic white-faced capuchins. And this led researchers to believe that the trichromacy it's advantages in fruit consumption. However, the dichromats were better at finding insects in compared to the trichromats. So this creates this kind of evening out within the population, within the gene pool, because one, one type, like the trichromats are better at finding the red fruit and the dichromats are better at finding insects on foraging. So then it kind of creates these, yes, each, yes, the dichromats are not good at finding the fruit. Yes, the trichromats are not as good at finding the insects, but they're still able to find what they're good at, is what I'm trying to say. So this has led to the, what is known as balancing selection within the population. And this is because none of these traits have really outshined the other, and both are still exhibited in the population, meaning that no, none of them were so good to the point where they outshine the other. So then we know that each unique vision type is attributed to a different foraging technique that is advantageous to the individual user. So like I said, the dichromats better at insects, the trichromats better at finding fruit, and so on and so forth. So then this creates what is known as balancing selection within the population, which is when different alleles are maintained in a gene pool, which is why both primates are still found today. So basically selection is strong enough to push for both of these traits in the certain environment. So there's still insects for the dichromats, there's still fruit for the trichromats. Yes, they can each still pick up on those other things, but they're still better at finding the dichromats, the insects, the trichromats, the fruit. And then, yeah, so the next slide. Now we have the questions for the class. So these questions will be posted to kind of um, accelerate discussion on the forum. And they will be posted on, in the forum following class on the 23rd, just for everyone to kind of get a jump start on everything. And I know that we will not be doing the crew till Thursday, but so it's good to kind of get your 
get the juices going and having everyone think about these different topics. So we talked about the white-faced trichromat capuchins having advantages over the white-faced dichromat capuchins. But we want to know, do y'all think that these differences are significant enough or are they insignificant? So what we're saying is forget the reading for a little bit and really think about, okay, the dichromats, better at insects, the trichromats, better at fruit. Which one do y'all think would be better in the long run and why? So we want you to take into consideration things like um, re uh, deforestation, things of like climate change, things that will disrupt the environment. Um, based on this premise, are they better? Are they not better? And then after we have, which study do you think is more reliable? The captive studies or the field studies, why? And this is just basically picking your brain about, is it better to control certain instances in the captive studies? Or is it better to just lay, leave the primates to do whatever they feel in the wild and just study their behaviors like that? And realistically, there is a right answer. But in this case, as we've seen, each study had its own benefits to being conducted. So we would like to know which one do y'all think was stronger, the captive or the field? And so that leaves us with our references and our concluding remarks. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you for watching the video and yeah.